When lightning flashes, it casts a shadow. My name means shadow. With my blade, I purged all obstacles to progress. And yet, something was lost with each step forward. In the end, I even lost her. The tales are still retold in the shade of every Thunder Sakura. But the wounds left on our nation by that terrible loss still ache. Never stop searching, even if only for a brief flash of light. If nothing else, we have the present moment. She said that once. But I've seen the nation strike forward and lose everything to the heavenly principles. Perhaps only if time stands still will the lightning's glow never fade. The present moment is a fragile illusion. Only eternity can bring us closer to the heavenly principles. I am no longer the shadow. Mine is the most supreme and noble form. Let power over the realm be vested within me. In this form shall I honor my subject's dream for a land of eternity, unchanging forevermore. Is it time for some moon chase specialties? Hey, we're here! Hey, grab a seat. I'm just running through my ingredients to see what I'm missing. Oh, we're gonna do this now? What is it? <laughs> but this is your idea! Why you gotta dump it on Paimon? Ugh. Okay, so back at Longshu Inn, we noticed you and Kuching were getting along pretty well. So you really like hanging out with her, huh? Yep. Kuching's good-natured and easy to be around. The kind of person everyone wants to know, right? You're a braver person than Paimon. The first time we met Kuching, Paimon found her pretty intimidating. You think so? I remember thinking straight away that she was really easy to get along with. Didn't you see her sneaking treats to Goba back at Wangshu Inn? Yeah, she's great. We know that now. We're just talking about first impressions. First impressions? Oh, okay. Hmm. Hey, have you guys eaten grilled shellfish before? They can be hard to crack at first, but they taste amazing that way. We've eaten shellfish before, but I don't think we've ever tried eating them grilled. Oh, you're missing out. I'll grill some for you another time. But anyway, Kuching's like a shellfish. Maybe a little closed off at first, but once you get to know her, she's got a soft and squishy side too. Not to mention that even after her favorite food was stolen away, she was still happy looking after Guoba. I'm really grateful for that. You make a good point. You know, Xiang Ling's intuition for people seems really spot on. Is that why she took a liking to Kuching so quickly? All right, let's see. We're okay for carrots and crab, and we still got some ham and mushrooms. Hmm, I wonder what Kuching's recipe is gonna be. Huh? What was that noise? What's going on? What the? That bird is huge! Ah, it's the ladybird! Excuse me, one shall not be addressed in such a manner. One shall be known as Adeptus, whose name, should you care to mention it, is Cloud Retainer. Cloud Retainer? That does sound like an Adeptus name. Well spoken. One shall let this young lady's enlightened words atone for the ignorant ones of her friend. A while it has indeed been, Traveler. Does one surmise correctly that you hasten hither to partake in the Moon Chase Festival? Ah. So even the illustrious Traveler 
has been summoned to attend the Moon Chase Festival. As expected, this year's theme stands proud against the test of public scrutiny. The theme? You mean Feast of the Bounteous Land? The very same. Moon Chase Festival falls during the season when many cooking ingredients are ripe. Hence, it is a fitting time to enjoy the finest of foods. One notice the relative pomp and ceremony with which this year's affairs are being conducted, and could not abide to stand idly by. Let it be known that one's culinary proficiency and ingenuity is uncontested in all the world. Thus does one now appear in this realm, that those who inhabit it might witness one's latest creation, a supreme cuisine machine. Uh, a, a supreme cuisine what? What's a supreme cuisine machine? Patience. One's purpose here today is to meet and to greet. Nothing further. All shall be revealed before your very eyes when the time arrives. Traveler, you are one who has witnessed much of the culinary world. When the day comes, one would be most pleased to see you in attendance, offering your most vociferous ovations. Oh, so we're officially invited? Hmm. That which is implicitly understood needs not be made explicit, let alone official. I shall say no more and dwell here no longer. Await my word. Be there or beware. This bird always disappears just as quickly as she shows up. Oh, wait, not bird, Adeptus. Hey, wait, isn't she technically an illuminated bird though? She seemed like someone very prestigious, and very talented at cooking. She definitely, definitely loves her food. What are you all huddled together over here for? The Adeptus left already. Yay! Kuching's back! Sorry I kept you waiting, Xiangling. This is the recipe from my grandfather's notes. They're not in the best condition, so rather than bring them out of the house, I just transcribed the recipe. Unfortunately, the texts my grandfather worked with were very old, usually faded, damaged, or both. Some parts are missing from this recipe, too. Uh, do you think you'll still be able to work with it? Oh, okay. Let me take a look. Hmm. Mm hmm. Hmm. Give me some time. I need to look into it. Sorry for the trouble. Oh, uh, you're all here? That voice sounds familiar! Sorry to interrupt your conversation. I was in the area buying a few things, and I heard the disturbance, so I felt compelled to come take a look. You mean Cloud Retainer? I saw her too. She just suddenly showed up right in the middle of the street. <laughs> Whatever adeptal power that was, she certainly knows how to make an entrance. Lady Kuching, you saw her too? <sighs> Do you, uh... Have a moment? I need to... discuss something with you. What is it, Ganyu? Has something urgent come up while I've been out? No, it's nothing work-related. I wanted to ask about... um... something personal. Is that okay? A personal matter? Involving me? Surely I haven't done anything improper recently, have I? Please, Lady Kuching? This is really important to me. Oh, uh, okay. I noticed Cloud Retainer was here for quite a while. Did she say anything about... Um, me? When I was young? About your childhood? No, nothing at all. What? Really? Whew. Thank goodness. I was getting really worried. Once she gets talking to people, she tends to go off on all sorts of tangents. So I was worried she might have bored you with some stories about me. <sighs> Your name didn't even come up, so you've nothing to worry about. Kuching, how are you not asking a bunch of questions right now? There's obviously some juicy gossip here. Aren't you curious to find out what it is? Ah, uh, please no, don't do that to me. Of course not. Whatever it is, I'm not curious and I'm not going to ask. 
If Ganyu has a secret and she wishes to keep it that way, nobody should make it their business to try and get it out of her. That's just basic decency, is it not? Oh, yes, ma'am. Paimon will never bring it up again. Kuching, I... Thank you. You're so kind and considerate. I've always seen that in you. What's that got to do with... <sighs> Honestly... Go on, you should be getting back now. Oh my, you're right, I should. Okay, everyone, please excuse me. I should get back to work now. Take good care of Kuching for me. Hey, what are you trying to say? Ah, uh, don't worry, Ganyu, we will! <laughs> Thanks. Hope to see you again soon. <sighs> just ignore her. Hey, everyone! I just had an idea! It only occurred to me when that Adeptus showed up. Do you think the Stove God could be an Adeptus, too? Ooh, could be! I don't want to assert either way, but it seems highly likely. In that case, we should go ask the Adepti about it. I think my master might be able to help. Master? You mean, your teacher is an Adeptus? Uh-huh. She's over at Yujing Terrace. Come on, I'll introduce you. Oh, Shang Ling. Uh, uh, Madam Ping is Shang Ling's master? I did not expect that. Master, how are you keeping these days? Are you well? Oh, very well, thank you. What a surprise it is that you all had the time to come and visit me today. Hello. Master, we came here because we have a question for you. Do you know about the Stove God? Of course I know the Stove God. Does this mean you know them personally? Ah, I see. It's the Moon Chase Festival, isn't it? How interesting. <laughs> so you came to hear some stories about the Stove God. That's right. We're investigating something that happened recently. I see. The great stone surfaces. <laughs> and so you open an investigation. <laughs> I must commend your guesswork this far. I did indeed know the stove god of whom you speak, but it was a great many years ago. <laughs> Moonchase was originally a rite observed by the Adepti, not something in which the ordinary people of Liyue would ever partake. But over the years, they have sought to emulate it for themselves many times, giving rise to various festivals bearing the Moonchase name. On nights when the moon shone bright, everybody would get together for joyful reunions. There would be fine food, fine wines, and choice teas. Later, Rex Lapis unified all of these various festivals under the Moonchase name to honor an old friend of his. In short, the heavens were our witness as we vowed to the moon to come together in joyful solidarity, to remember the past and reflect upon the present. That is the meaning of the Moonchase Festival. Rex Lapis. <sighs> <laughs> That friend made many contributions to Liyue, and Rex Lapis would not have them go unrecognized. Turning this season into a commemoration of his old friend was also a way to honor that friendship. I can only presume that the Stove God Festival was one of the many subsumed into the Moon Chase Festival. In the hands of Rex Lapis, our nation's traditions were faithfully upheld. It is to their detriment that we must now be the ones to inherit this duty. Ah, oh, Kuching, I simply won't allow you to be so down on yourself. 
Nothing would delight Rex Lapis more than to know that those who follow in his footsteps continue to value these traditions and are working tirelessly to do them justice. Thank you. Lady Kuching! Huh? Lady Kuching, Lady Ningguang wishes to speak with you. Ningguang's looking for me? Must be important. Please excuse me, everyone. If I'm not back soon, you'll find me at Ningguang's office. There she goes! Hmm. Kuching's a lot more serious when she's got her work face on. Do you want to know who Rex Lapis's friend was? Yes, precisely. There are few genuine coincidences in the world. The story of the Lost Festival and the Old Friend are indeed one and the same. The Stove God was a good friend of mine, too. <sighs> what a pity it is that the God is now gone both from the world and from people's memories. How could that happen? It is to everyone's regret that the Stove God passed. But gods cannot be fully destroyed, and we made a pact to wait until the land became fruitful once more. For perhaps the stove god would then return, albeit in a new form. Really? Master, you must miss the stove god a lot, right? From the way you talk about it all, it sounds like you were the best of friends. Yes. Thinking back on it all, there are many fond memories. I'm pleasantly surprised to find that Kuching is investigating this. She is a tenacious child, and anything she sets her mind to, she will diligently pursue. It warms my heart and makes me want to give her a helping hand. Unfortunately, however, I cannot simply give her the answer, for the process is of great importance to her. Kuching's grandfather once researched the Stove God, and now she follows in his footsteps. Since Kuching has inherited this conundrum, so too she must inherit the journey to its resolution. You knew Kuching's grandpa? Of course. I count all the people of Liyue among my good friends. I remember when he was the same age as Kuching is now. <laughs> ah, so young. Grandparent and grandchild are definitely made from the same mold. Both diligent enough to take on anything and bold enough to see it through to the end. I like to think of Lyre as my own little potted plant. I've watched it grow and blossom, and it grows more beautiful all the time. In the blink of an eye, the buds of yesterday are in full bloom today. <laughs> it's wonderful to see. For new blossoms must bloom on the branches if the tree is to remain ever green and ever young. My dears, you are absolutely right to focus your investigation on the stone. It is, as you suppose, the lost statue of the Stove God, and within it lie all the answers that you seek. I should like to see the stone for myself if you would lead me to it. Perhaps the truth will emerge even as we watch on. You're all here. I was just about to send someone to fetch you. Kuching, has the stone undergone any changes? A crack has appeared in one corner, but we still can't tell what's inside. What happened? Did someone chip it while no one else was looking? More likely a natural occurrence. Our weapons have had no effect on it. How would a natural occurrence crack it open? This is because the Stove God draws power from the actions of the masses. The heat of a busy kitchen. The joy of a reunion. <laughs> Keep up the good work. And the truth will rise to the surface soon enough. All the books say the Stove God is the deity of food. So is the stone opening up because everyone's cooking for the festival? Hmm. Statues draw power from their people. 
So, if the stove god has dominion over cooking, could it be that the passion people put into their cooking gives power to the stove god? Ningguang and I chose Feast of the Bounteous Land as this year's theme, and now every chef signed up for the competition is busy preparing. Paimon's theory is not an unreasonable one. Plus, a lot of families have reunion feasts around this time. With everyone back home, the whole city's bustling with people, and that adds a lot to the festive atmosphere. So if the stone cracked because Leah has started getting festive, that must mean that when the festive fever peaks, it'll bust right open, right? That's gotta be it, right, Master? <laughs> well, we'll have to see then, won't we? Okay, the fact that cooking is involved gives us a perfect opportunity. The selection space of Masterful Chefs will be held indoors and seen by only a few people. But the finals will be held outside in public. Everyone who wants to will be able to come and watch it. The atmosphere will be incredibly lively, no question. And when the finals end, boom! We'll get to see who the Stove God really is, right? It's definitely a possibility. Well, I've already signed up, so I should be able to help. Yes, for a chef as accomplished as yourself, getting to the final should be a breeze. All this talk of cooking competitions is making Paimon hungry. Oh, Paimon can't wait! It'd be great if Paimon could take a nap and then wake up when it's the finals. Paimon! Did you hear the news? I made it through the selections for Masterful Chefs! Really? Woohoo! That's great! <laughs> it was a total breeze. I wasn't even trying. Oh, uh, but a true champion never rests on their laurels. I'm still gonna need your help to prepare for the competition. I made a few new test dishes and I was hoping everyone could try them and give some feedback. A traveler, you want to be the first? Oh, oh, yeah, we did. And anyway, we get to eat your food all the time, so we're biased. You should find some other people this time, just to play it safe. Good idea. Okay, let me think. Hmm. Ah, let's get Beto to try it first. Beto! Yep, you can definitely trust her opinion. Let's go find her! Right now she should be down at the docks. Let me box up this food real quick, then we can head on down. Beto! Ahoy! Hey, look! Who is she with? Hi, Beto! Hi, Xinyan! Are we interrupting anything? Xiangling! <laughs> Woman of the hour, we were just talking about you. Oh, well, Beta was saying you and I should get ourselves on board sometime. Says the whole crew's been asking for us. <laughs> Seems like you three go way back. Oh, we really do. Beto and Shinyan are two of my oldest customers, and I've helped out in the kitchen on board Beto's ship in the past. Recently, Shinyan's been planning to do a show on board, too. That's the plan. Good music's meant for sharing. You guys should check it out sometime. Will do. But I came here today because I made it into the Masterful Chef's Finals, and I was just trying out some new dishes to bring to the competition. Can you have a little taste and give me some feedback? Sure, beats drinking on an empty stomach. Oh, about time. I'm starving over here. Let's see what you got. Oh, man. This chicken foo young's tasting awesome! Oh, this food is too good for me to be soaking up the alcohol with. <laughs> These three seem to have a great time with each other. The only thing is you've got three dishes here. Chicken foo young, come and get it, and crystal shrimp, and they all taste kind of refreshing. Uh, is refreshing really a flavor? When you spend all your time at sea, you don't have a lot of choice when it comes to food. Especially on the longer voyages, where you've got to stretch out your rations as far as you can. 
first thing you want to do when you get back on dry land is dig into a nice hot meal that's swimming in oil and has a ton of flavor. That's the exact opposite of Ning Wong's tastes. Oh, sure is. Beto's tastes are pretty similar to mine and Xiang Ling's. Ugh, Ning Guang. I am sick of hearing that name. Our tastes couldn't be more different. You'll never find us eating the same bowl of food. But last time when you were chatting with her, Paimon thought you two seemed to get along just fine. We're evenly matched. Guess that makes us equals. But I'm sorry, limp cabbage leaves are never gonna do it for me. I hear ya, I hear ya. Steamed cabbage and broth might be upper class and look fancy and all, but man, is it boring! It's never gonna give you that flavor explosion you get with some of the other dishes out there. So, Xinyan, are these dishes too mild for you too? Well, not so much mild. I just think you maybe missed a beat somewhere. Exactly. This is some fine cooking, no question about that. But if this is for a competition, it needs more... Oomph. Beat? Oomph? Mm, are we sure these terms apply to cooking? Beat and oomph. Hmm. Beat, yeah. You know what a beat is? I only know music, though. I'm nowhere near your level when it comes to cooking, so don't mind me if it doesn't make much sense. No, no, you're both completely right. Beat and oomph. That's what I need. I actually thought as much while I was cooking them. Even though this was a brand new combination, it still felt like I was missing that one thing that'll seal the deal. You know, really push it over the finish line. Seems like she's found her muse. Um, does that mean music theory is compatible with cooking? Hey! Paimon didn't quite get the implication, but Paimon can tell when you're being a meanie. Okay, I think I know what I need to do. Great, so this went really well. Don't hold back, just get out there and do your thing. You're a pro, Xiangling, and you've totally got this. Hands down, best chef in Liyue Harbor. Ain't that right, Beto? Well, I think so anyway. More than any other chef. And there ain't a whole lot of people I'd be willing to say that about. <laughs> I'll do my best. Thanks, everyone. All right, we'll leave you to it. I'm gonna take Shinyan on board for a while. Xiangling, they both had pretty strong tastes. You sure that won't be a problem? Shouldn't we get a second opinion from someone with milder tastes? That's a good point. Beto likes her greasy stir fries, and Xinyan can really handle her spice. Yeah, we should get another opinion. Now, who do we know whose tastes are on the mild side? Um, Traveler, any suggestions? Who, who, who? Oh, right! Makes sense! So, back to Wang Xiu Yin? Who? Who is it? Someone you just missed last time we were there! Huh? Oh! Paimon remembers! He said that we just need to speak his name and poof! He'll show up! Um, will he definitely hear us saying his name though? Maybe we should find somewhere quieter. <laughs> 